Hara Katsiki. I'm a quantum healer. I'm based in Berlin, Germany. And I am very, very happy today. I'm very excited because I have with me an incredibly amazing woman, which I, I met two years ago. And I'm truly honored to have her here with me today and uh, let her share who she is and what she's offering and what she's doing in our beautiful world. She, her name is Robin Rheingold and uh, she's an intuitive, she's an energy worker, she's a clear conduit channel. So hello, Robin. <laughs> Thank you, Hara. Thank you so much. I'm really honored to be here. And of course, we had a magical meeting two years ago. And since then, it's been magic each time we speak. So I'm truly grateful to you. So thank you for having me today. It's an honor. And you know what? Before we just start this, um, this video, I was uh, checking the date that we met. And it's uh, 19th of March, uh, two years ago. So it's almost exactly two years it's amazing it's really fun wow wow incredible yeah so uh, i'm gonna share with you guys a little bit about um, about how we met very quickly just because it's 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 so important for us for us and um, it's a it's a fun, it's a nice story so uh, we met uh, in egypt in uh, in cairo uh, because we were both called for um for the spring equinox, right? Yes. And uh, we met uh, <laughs> very close to, to the Sphinx, a few meters away from the Sphinx. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was uh, an incredible encounter uh, for both of us. And it was a reconnection, a family reconnection, and uh, mm -hmm. a very old one and we are not going into many, many details at, in this video perhaps we make another one just really talk about that yes um so anyway to put it in other words we we knew each other from uh, from the past from other lives and uh, i am thrilled to reconnect with you and yeah. and again you know be, be 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 with you and and be connected to you again and I want to say something more because that's, that I found it this really funny. So that was a few years ago. I was uh, walking around in, uh, in Berlin in flea market. And so this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were going to share that. <laughs> of course. I mean, come on. We have to light things up, you know. I mean, we really, really need to light things up, especially right now. I mean, yes. Seriously, so th this is an amazing story. Come on, so this this doll, everyone can see the <laughs> the incredible. <laughs> uh, how do you say? Uh, how 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 alike? How do you how how you look alike? Yes, that, resemblance. Thank you, resemblance. Okay, that's the word. So. I found this doll a few years ago and I grabbed it and I thought, and I said to myself, I need to have this one. I really need to have it. And my friend who was with me at that time, he said, why do you want this doll? I mean, you know, I said, I don't know. I just need to have it. And then, um, yeah, it all uh, made sense when, when we, when we met and then I came back after the trip to Egypt, I came home and I saw the, the doll standing, standing there and, and looking at me and, and I, I was like, no way. Yes, I think the universe was communicating with, uh, well ahead of our meeting, for yeah. sure. In a very sweet way, in a, in a sweetest, softest way. Um, anyway, so uh, I, I would like that you uh, share with us and the people who, who, are, who are watching a little bit about yourself and a little bit about um, your awakening process maybe maybe we start with that what do you think sure i'd love to so for me um i would say that as a very young child i had several experiences that um one might say were uh, 
um, paranormal. Um, I remember I used to fly down the steps as a child, um, which I found out later that actually that was um, a soul fragment that had broken away because of trauma. Um, but then also I remembered my grandmother's uh, sister passing away and I went to the funeral and I wasn't very close to her, but I remember after the funeral that night, she was walking up the steps in my, in my house. And I remember being absolutely terrified um, of seeing this woman, ghost, whatever you want to call it, walking up um, the steps of my house. Oh my and um, so I had experiences like that as a child. And then as I got older, I can remember um, just really being drawn to things like the solstice, really loving to be out in nature. Um, I remember doing like a solstice um, ceremony out in my backyard with my friends, like when I was like 16 or 17. I had no idea what I was doing, but it's like, I don't, you know, I don't even remember. I just remember as being out on the blanket and doing something outside. So I had these types of experiences growing up. And then in college, I decided to become vegetarian. I started meditating um, and I just started connecting with something, I would say something else that I couldn't explain at the time. And then I got into Tai Chi and, and uh, martial arts and um, I started meditating more. And, and so my path kind of always had kind of like a spiritual undertone to it, I would say. And then I studied with gurus. I had, um, I went to India, I um, did several things. I studied Taoism and Islam. Um, and so I had both of my children at home, with midwives. And I raised them in a very conscious way. Um, you know, let them sleep with me. I breastfed for a very long time. Um, just really um, always felt a little bit um, different from most people. I will say it that way. And, and then in 2015, um, I remember going out in nature. And I remember having these like, like heart opening experiences where I would literally just start bawling. And I mean, just crying out of pure joy. I, and I was like, something is happening to me. Like, what is going, am I going crazy or what? But now I understand what was happening was Gaia was waking me up. And so from that, those experiences, I started asking questions like, what is happening to me? And as a result, I started um, finding YouTube videos. I started reading more books. Um, and mind you, I had the background of books like Keepers of the Dawn from Barbara Nersiniak. I'd read that when I was in college. So I had this undertone of, I know there's more, I know there's something else happening on this planet. But at that time, I didn't associate this heart opening with all of that. So as I started looking at YouTube videos and then started getting sessions with people, I started being like, oh, I'm having my awakening. Like, I understand this. And um, so from there, things just rapidly unfolded. Amazing, amazing. And um, uh, what a way to wake up through um, Earth, uh, through the Earth energy. Yes. I love that. Yes. Um, I'm very much connected to the Earth energy. Um, I believe that um, I have very ancient connections with Gaia. I feel very close to her. I feel very close um, to the elements, the elementals, um, all the animals, birds. I get lots of signs from nature. And um, I believe this is from having many lifetimes um, as a shaman. Yes. Wow. Get showers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens all the time with us, right? When we talk. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Goosebumps, goosebumps, goosebumps. Amazing, amazing. Thank you for sharing your journey with us. Um, so you are, uh, you're traveling a lot, right? Would you like to talk to us about that? Yes. Yeah, so um, also a couple years ago, um, as I started waking up, as I started remembering bits and pieces and really um, figuring out um, different aspects of myself, um, I started getting these overwhelming urges to travel. And I mean, like, like, Sekhmet um, was part of a big part of my journey. And I remember one morning she woke me up at 3 a.m. and she said, you need to go to Egypt for the equinox. And this was in 2018. 
And I was like, you know, how in the world can I go to Egypt in seven days? Like money, how am I going to, you know, where am I going to stay? All these things, where am I going? And, and by myself. And for me, it was such a strong, strong urge inside of me that I, I just couldn't say no. So I ended up going to Egypt, which is when I met you. I met another um, person that I had lifetimes with that turned out to be one of, um, I would say, my strongest teachers in this lifetime. Um, that's Ray Chandran. And then um, I met lots of soul family on that trip. It was pretty incredible. So I would get these like overwhelming urges to travel. So after that Egypt trip, I went to India. I went to Jerusalem with a group of soul family. Um, and all of these, these trips were around doing planetary work that somehow there was one part of me that understood what I was doing. And then another part of me, I would say, I'm like, okay, I just show up and I just allow things to happen. Yeah. Um, so I've been to Egypt four times now in the last two years. Wow. Um, Jerusalem, I've been to, I stayed in Mount Shasta for a couple of months. I've been to Sedona. Um, I've traveled to uh, Kenya, to, well, I can't even think of where else it have been, but yeah, I think that it's mostly of where I've been, yes. Mm -mm. And you're also doing um, more and more uh, group work with the, when you travel, right? Yes, yes, yes. So um, what starts happening is that um, different people are getting the call and we end up meeting somehow. It's, it's really incredible how it works. Um, the other place that I went was Glastonbury. And each time I go somewhere, I usually I meet other people who I've had past lifetimes with. Mm -hmm. And like the soul recognition is so strong and so powerful and amazing. And so, you know, it's like when we go to these sacred places, um, one thing that we're doing is picking up these like pieces of our soul that we left in these other lifetimes. And it's like we're putting these puzzle pieces back together and becoming whole again. And then the other piece to that is we're meeting our soul family and each of us carries codes and we're exchanging codes with one another and awakening different aspects and parts of ourselves that we've forgotten. So each time I've traveled, um, it's, it's allowed me or taken me closer to becoming whole again, remembering um, really the soul or the, I would say the divine light that I carry. Yes. Amazing. And, and it's, uh, it's, so, it's so amazing when you are guided. It's, it's so fascinating, right? Because there are many who resonate, I guess, with, with your, um, the way you're being guided and, 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 and going in different places, knowing that there is a part of you who's doing a, a work, but uh, perhaps we don't know exactly what that is, but still you are there and things fall into place, dots are being connected, uh, incredible synchronicities are taking place, so much healing, so much connection. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's just amazing, right? And yeah. It's, it is, it's, it's absolutely incredible. And one thing I want to say is I didn't always have the money to do these things. Like some people are like, how are you traveling all over the world? And I'm like, you can't imagine the miracles that happen. And so to me, what I would tell people is like, you know, when you begin to follow your heart, so many miracles are possible. I mean, so many miracles are possible. I mean, I'm just thinking now as we're talking, like, also I went to Costa Rica and Panama. And, um, yeah, it's like different trips are coming to me now because I literally have been traveling like crazy the last few years and it, it, it's just been amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, would you like to talk to us a little bit about your uh, work as a shaman? So I definitely, um, I don't call myself a shaman. Um, However, I know that I've had lifetimes as a shaman and I remember some of those lifetimes, I get glimpses of those lifetimes. And I would say one of the um, most amazing things that I've found that I'm able to do now is shamanic journeying. And when I start doing shamanic journeying, I mean, I go into all kinds of different worlds. I meet so many different beings. Um, 
And I, I just understand the connections that I have and I'm able to bring back information from these different worlds. And I'll say when I first got started again, um, one of uh, the readings that I had, um, one of the teachers said, you know, you've been a shaman, you should really study shamanism in this lifetime. So I went, I took a weekend workshop in LA and it was amazing. I learned how to journey and I got back home and I was like, whoa, I started journeying for myself in this huge, like amazing uh, sh shaman started teaching me. He was my guide from, he, he looks, I would say he's Maori. Um, he started teaching me and he started taking me on these incredible journeys. And, and I'm talking about guide, etheric guide, like he's not in the physical. Um, he started taking me to these different places and he started teaching me. And so here in my human life, I tried to do like a shamanic um, training. And it's like, my guides kept coming like, why are you doing this? Like, no, this is not for you this lifetime. All you need to do is remember. And so I was basically taught or helped to remember my shamanic path through my guide. Mm -hmm. And so I haven't really had formal, formal training in this lifetime. Um, I did do some work with um, one of my previous teachers who was Pamela. Um, I did some shamanic work with her. But um, one of the biggest things that happened to me, um, I had someone, a mentor, who really told me, you know, start journeying for other people. And I was afraid. I was like, oh no, I don't do this for other people. I'm just doing it for myself. But I remember a couple years ago, um, I gave 20 free shamanic journeys to people just to practice. And oh my God, I went through, I went to so many different places. I saw so many different beings, aquatic beings, dolphins, whales, um, mer people. Um, I went to different planets. I was able to connect people with their um, star and lineages. I mean, it was really incredible and it really um, broadened my horizons greatly. Yeah, 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 beautiful. So would you like maybe to describe um, what would be uh, a, a, for someone if would, he, would, he or she would like to, to have a session with you? So my sessions vary. So normally when I do a shamanic journey for someone, I do that on my own and then I give them the results of the journey. However, I do in-person sessions where I do um, light language activations and clearings. I do um, energetic, um, I'll, I'll use the word healing, but energetic work with people to remove blockages, um, to remove past traumas because all of these traumas and these lifetimes that we've had they're all lodged in our body, right? And so these things have to be released because I look at it like um, we are kind of clearing out all of this gook from lifetimes, you know, all these programs, um, imprints, traumas, all these things are stored in our bodies. And as we begin to clear those out, then all these higher amazing aspects can come in. So one of the things that I do in my sessions is to really help people to release and let go of um, or even heal some of those um, traumas or imprints or programs um, and, and belief systems that don't serve them anymore. And so um, each session is very different. I really connect with the person's guides and whatever your guides or higher self, um, I would say, and, uh, guide me to do is, is pretty much what is done. And so, um, I, I do also a few other things like galactic shakti pot, which is an energy transmission that I learned through um, uh, Ray Chandran. Um, I do a little bit of kundalini work that um, I don't necessarily advertise. It kind of just happens when people come, um, if they're ready, if the, if the energy is ready to move. Mm. Um, so every session is, is really very different and I really connect with the person and just allow them to um, I guess release or heal or or get, even connect. Get, yes. The, get rid of the baggage, right? Yes, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Um, and you channel. <laughs> yes, 
Yes, yes. Um, yeah, so channeling is interesting. There's many different um, concepts about how people feel about channeling, I would say. Um, what is channeling for you? Um, for me, it's really connecting with my higher aspect. And well, it's interesting. I, I, I haven't thought about how to, how to answer that, but you know, I remember having this experience that um, I used to call in the Ascendant Masters and say I would work with one and I might see them in my third eye and I would know, okay, they, they are here. But I think the, the more you journey on this path and the more you connect with your higher self, it's like you start understanding that we're all one at a certain level, right? At a very high level, we are all one. Yeah. And so to me, it's really tuning into that field of oneness and being able to um, access uh, the wisdom or energies of the beings that exist in those collectives. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do you have some um, predominant beings that come through you, that connect with you, that you have? It's really interesting. Relationship with? Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I would say yes and no. So when I have sessions with people, um, I pretty much am an open channel and I channel, I just kind of set the stage for, you know, a certain type of being that are benevolent and, you know, in alignment, but really um, I'm able to bring forth many different beings, um, many different um, beings from different star nations. But I would say predominantly, if I had to say who I work with the most um, would be the inner earth beings, um, the indigenous beings of the earth. So all of the indigenous elders, um, I often work with them. I work with Mother Gaia, definitely with Mother Sekhmet, or I call it Mama Sekhmet. Um, I also work with, um, I feel very close to Yeshua and um, the different masters like Master Serapis Bay, Master Sanat Kumaru, um, Master Kutumi, Master Buddha. I really feel, um, very close to many different beings. Exactly. And so from, There's yes, so for me, range, right? yes, yes, yes. I don't, I wouldn't even really say that there's one. I mean, I have so many different experiences and normally I just ask for whoever is kind of like aligned to me at this point to come mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking how about if we, um, if you feel like, um, there is um, a being um, what is clo working closely to you or is more aligned at this time on our planet. Perhaps if you would like to maybe see if you can connect with uh, something, some kind of being or collective out there and perhaps bring a message for all of us who are uh, here right now. Yes, absolutely. Wow. <laughs> Um, so a lot of times um, I call them the divine mothers, which I see as a collective of divine mothers, and they can be anywhere from Mama Isis to Mother Mary, um, and many that we are not necessarily familiar with. Um, Nana Baluku, I mean, many, many different divine mothers come through, and I see them as a collective. And so today, um, I'm going to have a message from the divine mothers. So, these times that we are in now, um, that many of you refer to as the equinox, um, can be likened to a rebirth. And we, the Divine Mothers, are here letting you know that during this rebirth, we are standing here as midwives. We are here to assist you in this divine rebirthing. We are here to support you, to nurture and guide you through this birthing process. For now, you are giving birth to a new you, to a new human that is to walk this planet. 
to a new light being, to a new light body that will enable you to connect with your origins, with the divine light that you are. So during this process, as many of you have experienced or have read about or are familiar with, the birthing process can be extremely painful. Our bodies literally change to accommodate this birthing. And as you know, a baby comes from the unseen into the seen. And just as you are now bringing forth higher aspects of yourself from the unseen into the seen, into the known. This is a very similar process that you are all going through right now. And once the birthing pains are over and you look in awe and wonder at what miracle has just been birthed through you, what bundle of joy, of divine beingness, has just been birthed. So we want you to know that we surround you now, that we are everywhere, that we are in the trees, in the breeze, in the sun, in the grass, in the birds that sing. We are present all around you. Simply tune in to the energy of the Divine Mother and know that you are not alone during these times. And we welcome you into this new, amazing divine being, divine light being that is being birthed. That is you. Welcome. Do I have permission to ask a question? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, how can we as humans so soothe ourselves at these uh, challenging times and how can we best serve our um, fellow uh, human beings, uh, humanity at large? So of course, the first answer would be to go outside to go out in nature, to hear the birds sing, to look up at the sun, to feel the stillness present in nature that is speaking to you always, comforting you, there for you. And once you begin to realize that there's no other human on this planet that is separate from you, no matter what they look like, no matter where they live, no matter what religion they practice, no matter what food they eat, they are not separate from you. And when you begin to see your brothers and sisters as yourself, then of course you consider their well being. You want to assist in any way possible, and you genuinely love them as an extension of yourself as an extension of the divine. Thank you. What a beautiful message. Thank you so much, Robin. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't been put on the spot like that before, so thank you. <laughs> I think more and more people should um, um, hear the messages that uh, want to come through you. It's, thank you. It's, thank you. Yeah. Um, in, in fact, I am beginning to share a lot more. Um, you know, I had one of my big lessons, I would say, or things to heal was trusting myself. 
and my guidance. So I've recently had some major healings around trusting myself. And so I do feel much more ready um, to begin to share more, to assist humanity. And this is what we are here to do, you know, to shine our lights and to allow people to know that living from the heart is, can be such an incredible experience. And you are definitely a, a, um, um, sorry. <laughs> you are definitely an example of that because I know you in person and it's, it's, it's really, uh, I mean, you. when you are, someone is in your presence. And uh, I want to thank you for everything you are doing sharing and I want to ask you um, to share with the, with the people who are watching us where can they find you okay thank you so much um, you know I'm truly honored to be here now and to have walked the path that I've walked in the last few years it has not been an easy path but just please everyone know that although it may not be easy we're all being so supported um, so you can find me, um, I'm on Facebook under my name, Robin, R-O-B-Y-N, Ringgold, R-I-N-G-G-O-L-D. Also, my company is Divine Sunrays, which is also on Facebook under Divine Sunrays, um, D-I-V-I-N-E, and then Sunrays, S-U-N-R-A-Y-S. And then my website is divinesunrays.com, where you can book a session. And right now, through the end of March, I'm offering 30% off of my sessions for the Equinox. So all you have to do is put in the discount code. It will say, just put in Equinox, and you'll receive 30% off of sessions. And so um, I definitely want to help as much as I can. I'm going to be doing a lot more lives. Um, I'm going to be sharing much more light language, which um, I would say previously I haven't shared very much because I know people don't quite understand it, but I do believe it is one of my stronger gifts. And so um, I definitely want to begin to share much more with everyone. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank and you. I'm going to put all the links below, of course. And uh, I want to thank everyone for watching and uh, I send a big wave of love to everyone who is out there. Hopefully uh, we're going we're gonna to do this, we're going to get through this and uh, stronger than before and transformed, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And remember all the support that is all around us at all times. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you so much.